it's time for another PC build. It has been quite a while since we featured one on our channel, but this time we get to do it in 4K and we've actually got quite a lot of awesome parts here. So let's go ahead and go over these. If you were looking for a top-notch build that wasn't necessarily all that expensive, this, these are probably the parts that you wanna go for. For this build, we managed to spend around $2,000 and we've got top of the line parts. So without further ado, let's dive in and let's enjoy it. Despite that overly dramatic intro, there's definitely a lot to talk about today. And right here, I would like to start by listing out all the parts. So to begin with, I would like to start off with the case. And this time we're using a deep cool Matrix 55. And the reason why we went ahead and went for this case, it's not only because of the very beautiful RGB colors, but it is also just because this is a mid tower case that can actually fit quite a bit of things. The case is mostly opened up, which is not usually the case with <laughs> mid tower cases as usually part of the front is actually extruding backwards and then covering part of the inside. So in this case, with this case, it's actually most of it is completely open. And that is very important considering that we're using relatively large parts, such as the RTX 2080, which we will go ahead and talk about very, very soon. And well, our build is going to look very good in here. So now on to the next part. And so yeah, one of the most important parts of any build is obviously going to be the processor. And in this case, we are going to go with the Ryzen 7 3800X. And well, this is going to be the processor of choice for this build. The reason why is just because this processor is, as a matter of fact, a very powerful one. Considering the price, it is actually a great value in the sense that you get eight cores and 16 threads, which is of about $100 cheaper than the 9700K, or at least 50-ish. It's, it's definitely cheaper than 9700K and even the 9900K. And this one would very easily match up with the 9900K. As a matter of fact, definitely surpass the 9700K for less because you still have you know, the 16 threads on this CPU when in the 9700K you have no hyper threading at all. So you only have eight cores and eight threads. So you're losing out there. So the CPU will definitely be paired very, very well with the graphics card of choice. We're going to be socketing that CPU on this motherboard here. And this is the MSI MPGX 570 Gaming Plus motherboard. So this is a DDR4 motherboard AM4 socket, and this one in particular is meant for Ryzen CPUs. It's one of the new sockets for it. Now, the reason why we went for this motherboard is because it's definitely beefy enough to actually support a lot of the things that we want. Well, for the most part, it's just future-proofing. So we got things like extra PCIe slots for future or other graphics cards. We have quad channel, even though we're only using two sticks of RAM for this stick. If you wanted to upgrade to more RAM, we have those other slots. You also have NVMe slots, overclocking capabilities. There's a built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip onto this one. There's a lot that this guy offers. And in terms of future-proofing, this motherboard will be amazing for just that. Now, right here, I've actually got yet another monster. And that other monster is going to be the Gigabyte GeForce RTX 2080. This is not the super model. And the reason for that is actually because we determined that we could actually save a good buck by just going with normal model versus the super model. Since the super model isn't really that much more powerful than the RTX 2080, us being able to save a little bit of money and still getting pretty amazing performance was definitely worth the trade-off for us. Not to mention that this is a pretty beefy one, so the cooling system on this one is very good. It's got RGB lighting around the text. This is still one of the best graphics cards that you can get at this time, despite what I just mentioned. It is a great value and it's going to do very, very well for things like gaming or editing, video rendering, all of that stuff. So this one will definitely be able to cover a lot of ground now and moving forward. And now, since this is a pretty powerful build, you can definitely bet that things are gonna get pretty hot in there, especially since we did go for a smaller case, admittedly. And a solution for that is actually this water cooling system. This is the Corsair H100i Platinum version. This particular one is actually RGB powered, so as you can see, it is going to look very good in the case, but that is not the most important thing, obviously. The reason why we went for this one is because we will most likely end up overclocking this, maybe not now, but most likely in the future. So having that accessibility and the ability to future-proof that is definitely very good. Also, the tubing on this particular one are not very long. So you won't have to go through too much kinking and turning and twisting just to get the right fit for this water cooler. 
So that is one huge reason why we decided to go for this one as well. This is going to be a great value. And even though I understand that some people would prefer an air cooler, an air cooler would probably be a little bit too big for this case. And this one would perform better when it comes to overclocking in the future because the cooling on it will be more consistent. Next up is going to be our choice in memory. And this here is the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro. This is the 32 gig kit with two six of 16. The reason why we went for this one is just because in the future we might actually consider upgrading. But at the moment, we really just have the budget for 32 gigs and that it's going to be very, very good for the time being, especially since we're mostly just going to use it for gaming. This kit has very nice RGB lighting, again, very important, but we went for Corsair specifically because we can actually manage the lighting of both the water cooler and the RAM through the same software. Going back to the actual specifications of the RAM, 32 gigs is going to be more than enough for our usage at the moment, and it would only be upgraded to 64 gigs in the future if we absolutely needed it for something like After Effects that eats up a crap ton of RAM, or something like a 3 modeling or rendering that could also eat up so much of your RAM. So 32 gigs is definitely more than sufficient for the time being. And another important piece, we can't power this whole system without the use of a power supply. So in this case, we also chose Corsair and we went for the RM750X. So this is going to be a 750 watt power supply. And the reason why we went for this one in particular is not only because Corsair is already such a reputable brand that you can trust and many other people trust, including myself, but this is also a fully modular power supply. We don't have to worry about having extra cables in there that we don't actually need. We get to decide which cables we're going to have in there, all dependent on our needs, of course. Another thing is that 750 watts is definitely more than enough for the hardware that we have in here, and it should be sufficient as well for the future in case we decide to add even more components to make this an even more powerful build. So 750 watts works just fine for the time being, and I believe until the end of life of the system. Lastly, as for storage, we went with a one terabyte SSD from SanDisk and with a two terabyte drive from Seagate. The reason why we went for one terabyte SSD is because we are going for a pretty powerful system, which means that we're probably going to use a lot of programs that could benefit from an SSD. And we also would like Windows to be able to load as quickly as it can. And putting Windows onto an SSD will actually make that very possible. Even if this guy is filling up, when you turn on your computer, it should barely take any time to load up. And that's why an SSD, to me at least, is so important. But having the ability to just boot up important software like Adobe Premiere or Maya, Cinema 4D, and that sort of thing, as quickly as possible, just because it's on the SSD, does make a difference to your workflow. At least it does for some people, it helps me. Now the two terabyte drive is actually going to be for dump storage, so all other things that aren't necessarily all that important, such as games or just other kinds of software that doesn't really have all that importance, but that we might need the extra data for. That's why we have these two drives right here. And with all that all the way, let's go ahead and begin with the build. It's going to be a very exciting one, but we're going to be leaving links to absolutely all the parts we are going to feature in this video down in the description. And we're also going to put a pinned comment with the links to everything so that you don't miss anything. Now, all of these links are going to be affiliated, which means that if you do use our link to make a purchase of the sort, maybe you're interested in one of these parts and you buy them or you buy everything together, or maybe something else along the way, we do get a commission for all of that stuff, which does help us run things a little more smoothly around here. And it definitely helps us make better videos for you guys and bring better content and nicer equipment. So with that said, we would very much appreciate it if you went ahead and check that out. And let's begin. Okay, so first we're gonna start by taking apart the case. And for that, we actually have to take off these thumb screws from the side of glass panel. And once we do, we can just slide that off. And now from here, we can start to install the motherboard. Let's actually go ahead and flip that over. And let's remove that as well, just in case. You just have to unscrew it from this side. Now we can just slide this one off. but we're mostly going to be working from the front, so let's go back into that position. Okay, now we're going to start off by installing the motherboard. So the first thing we're going to do is align this one with the correct spots here on the case. And then once we have the correct orientation here, we can grab the IO shield and make the proper adjustments. So if the motherboard is going to be installed this way, all we're going to need now is the IO shield 
So we can see that this side goes with this one here. Now we can just pop the IO shield right in to this side. Once it pops in, you know that it is securely placed. So now we place the motherboard in, aligning it directly with the IO shield and making sure that it lands on the appropriate screws like this. So once you have it properly aligned, see that the ports are starting to stick out and then you can see the screw holes in the right spots. And at that point, you can start to screw the motherboard in. So we're going to be using the screws from the case in order to install the motherboard. It's got quite a few here. And now that the motherboard is securely placed, we can go ahead and enter the processor now. So yeah, the processor is going to come in this tiny little box here. And that this is actually what you're mostly paying for. Now when you open this up, you have to be extremely careful that the processor is not going to fall off when you open the box. So now, this right here is exactly what you're looking for. Before putting it in, the first thing you have to do is unlatch this retention clip. And then you have to make sure that this little arrow here is actually aligned with the arrow on the socket. And as I'm seeing here, it has to be oriented in this way. And then you don't have to apply a lot of pressure or anything. The CPU is just going to fall right into its spot. You give it a small wiggle to make sure it's fine. And then you apply quite a bit of pressure here to secure it. And yeah, the CPU has officially been installed. It's definitely become a lot easier to do since before. A lot of used to require a lot more strength, but this is fairly simple. Looks like AMD's worked on that quite a bit. Next step is going to be to install the RAM here. And this is what it's going to look like. So since we only have two sticks, we don't have too much to work with here, or at least so much work to do. So we can just go ahead and pick any two slots really, but just to make a little bit more space between these, uh, between uh, the tubes and the RAM sticks a little bit later, I think it's best to just keep them a little bit further apart. So I'm going to unlatch from both of these ends here. Okay, both RAM sticks have officially been installed. So now the next step, admittedly, is probably going to be the hardest one, and it is going to be with the water cooler. I would like to just get this part out of the way, only because I know that later when things get more cramped around here, it's going to become a lot more difficult to install the water cooler. So I'd rather this be one of the first things that we do. We actually want to go ahead and place the radiator over up on this side. You can actually install it over here on the front if you would like, but we wanted the radiator to go up here since it is going to have its own fans already and we didn't want to get rid of the fans that were already on the case. We replace them or just stick this one to those fans, not necessarily a preference. So we're gonna go with this method instead. And we're thinking that the tubes should probably be facing in this direction just so that it doesn't block any of the other wirings later. So we're gonna go ahead and install that. However, since the bracket that is already pre-installed on this guy happens to be from Intel, we have to go ahead and swap it around for the AMD one. Okay, and with that said, uh, really two screws is enough for me. As long as it is secured, and it is very much secure now, it is going to be just fine. So it can actually stay in this way if it has to, though adding a couple more screws won't hurt. And now at this step, we can actually begin by installing the fans on the radiator. So let's go ahead and do that. These will be requiring these very, very long ones. We're going to install them one by one. And it's going to be done from this little corner here.
Okay, so now that everything is secured, we can go ahead and move to the next step. Okay, so off camera, we actually took care of applying the new brackets to the water cooler before we went ahead and installed it onto the processor. So we're going to go with the, the ones that clip in, then you screw them in and then they just stay clipped for pressure. So with that said, that'll make it a lot easier so that we don't have to remove these little brackets in order to install the processor. Now this already has pre-installed thermal paste, so we're just gonna go with that. Really doesn't really necessarily need any more. Okay, so now with these clips installed, just have to go ahead and gently place this right on top of the CPU. Make sure that these little clips are actually hanging on. And once everything's secured, you can start screwing it in. Okay, now the water cooler is officially secured. So before we start plugging anything in, we're still missing quite a few parts. But I would actually like to start off by installing the power supply, which will be done from around the back. Let's go ahead and flip this build over. Okay, so the next step now is just going to be to install the power supply here. So we're going to start off with this for now. And then afterwards, we're going to move over to the hard drive and then the SSD. But everything should go over just fine. So we have to go ahead and lift up the sticker. Now we have to make sure to align everything so that it is correct. We could have the fan either facing upwards or facing downwards. It might be best to do it downwards just because there is actually a spot uh, for the fan to be filtered through if you make the fan face downwards. And then we just have to align this with the back here and install the screws. Okay, now that everything for the power supply has been screwed in, we can actually move on to the next section. And here we're going to install the hard drive and the SSD here. So in order for us to do that, we are going to have to remove these little brackets from their slots. That is going to be very easy. It's just one screw. And so let's just do one at a time to keep things simple. Let's start with the SSD, since that's the one I would like to have all the way on top. So after sliding this off, you just have to align the SSD properly with this here. And in this case, you would align it with the bottom. But before installation, we do have to remove this little piece. This was actually covering up the SATA connectors or SATA data and SATA power. After screwing this in, you really just need one screw for this one. Since it's only big enough to really fit one screw. So just make sure that that is properly secured. And yeah, the SSD is in the right spot. So you can just actually go ahead and slide that back in to its slot and then secure it back with. Now let's work on the hard drive. So then we have to make sure to align the hard drive properly. This is actually perfect fit. So we could install more than just one screw to secure it probably. And we've got room for two screws here actually.
Okay, now that that is secure, we can go ahead and flip this guy over and we can finally install one of the nicest pieces from this build, obviously, a graphics card. So, in order for us to do that, first things first, we have to unscrew some of the brackets here. But before that, we are going to go ahead and measure out the space so that we know exactly which brackets we have to undo. Now, these little, little pieces here might actually get in the way. Okay, so with these two out, now we can actually install the graphics card. So let's start off by pulling down this retention clip, then placing the graphics card down. And once you hear the clip, you will know that it is installed, but it won't be fully in, fully secured until we add the screw. Okay, so now with all of the individual components installed, we can actually move on to now connecting all of the cables and then testing this guy out. So prepare for a time lapse.
Okay, so now that this computer is set up, one of the first tests we're going to run is going to be Heaven on DirectX 11. So the settings that we're running on are Ultra for quality tessellation at extremes, anti-aliasing is at X8, and we're going to be running this at 1080p since this is a 1080p monitor, and let's go and run it. Okay, so now that the test is finally finished, we got an average frames per second score of 144.8, a general score of 3,649. The minimum frames per second that we saw was 53.6. The maximum was 311 frames per second, which is still pretty crazy. So I would say that the scores here are definitely very formidable. It's pretty good. Remember that we ran this at ultra quality and with extreme tessellation. Even though this was just sent in 1080p, it was definitely a great score that we just got here. Now let's go ahead and move, uh, move on to other benchmarks. Okay, so right now we're running the CPU-Z benchmark and this one is specifically for the CPU, a simulation of how it would perform against other kinds of processors. So in this case, we're actually comparing it with the Intel Core i9-9900K because those are the more direct competitors at the moment. So we're trying to see exactly how it stacks up against it and we'll come back with a score very briefly. Okay, so now that the benchmark is over, we've actually scored a total of 5,551.1 multi-threaded performance. For single-threaded, we just have 512. So in other words, the Ryzen 7 3800X performed just a little bit better than the i9 in terms of multi-threaded and a little bit worse in terms of single-threaded performance, which is totally fine because you're saving a good buck on this processor. So this is definitely a very good score that we got here. So for the Adobe Premiere test, video editing test, I decided to edit the entirety of my Nintendo Switch Lite review on this computer and the playback, even at full resolution, this is all done in 4K. It's definitely still very smooth, surprisingly, but it is all thanks to the many cores that this CPU has as well as th the threads. Now we're definitely going to be able to put both that and the GPU to a very strong test when we start rendering everything. Now, this entire video is actually 14 minutes long or so. Again, everything was shot and edited in 4K. We've got adjustment layers, we've got warp stabilizers, we've got all of that stuff going on. So now let's go ahead and test it in the render test just to see how long it'll take to render. So we're going to go ahead and set the settings, going to file, export media. And then once we're here, we're just gonna go ahead and call this demo render. Now that everything is set, it is going to render H.264 in 4K and it is going to use maximum render quality. So now let's start rendering, see how long it takes. Okay, so right now we're just about 25 minutes in and this video is actually rendering at 98% now. It's just a couple of seconds left until it's finally done. And I have to say that this computer has actually done a fantastic job at rendering this video because there's quite a lot going into it. This is a 14 minute 4K video that is running warp stabilizers 
It's got color correction layers on it, adjusting layers, all that sort of stuff. And it's even got more 4K video on top of each A-roll shot for the B-roll. So it definitely has to take in quite a lot. And the fact that it can manage all of this in just about 26 minutes is definitely very, very impressive. So for rendering and even just the experience of editing in the software, it's definitely very good. This is a fantastic build for just that. Okay, so right now I'm just playing a quick game of Monster Hunter World just to see how well this PC performs in the games. And I have to say that Monster Hunter not only looks wonderful, but as a matter of fact, it is running at a very high frame rate as well. There aren't any dips at all, despite what I end up running into. And while this isn't the most intensive game to run, it is definitely still, it can still be a challenge for a lot of different computers. But yeah, as I'm running this, everything seems to be running at a very smooth 60 frames per second. Granted, I'm also just playing this in 1080p, so this isn't the most intensive way of playing Monster Hunter that has ever existed, but still. Yeah, so this guy's already running away. It's definitely because of the amazing performance of this computer that he's running away. Because this PC can't run Monster Hunter like this one can. Also, I'm Hunter rank 50 here. But anyway, gaming performance on this computer is fantastic. It will definitely be able to crush any kind of game that you throw at it. And thus playing this game at 1080p is us not really taking full advantage of the performance that this computer can definitely output. You could definitely play games at 1440p or 2160, 4K, and you would still be able to crush most games, in fact, any game that you come across them. Even if you want to use RTX features, this computer can definitely crush all of those. And now in conclusion, this build cost us around $2,000 and got us a ton of performance for the money. This CPU and GPU combination is definitely good enough to suffice for so many of the different tasks that we could be doing on this computer. Though this build was specifically done for gaming, even though it is definitely more than sufficient to accomplish all other kinds of tasks. So some games that would probably going to be played on this, for sure, I know that are going to be FIFA. In my case, when I get the chance to use it, it's most likely just going to be Shadow of War since it is one of my favorite games. Final Fantasy 15 and that sort of thing. But things with RTX support like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Metro Exodus are still going to run beautifully on this computer, even with RTX on, that is for sure. Also for content creation, this computer is going to fly through things. For example, 14 minute 4K video with audio tracks, warp stabilizers, adjustment layers with color corrections on it, as well as clips just being stacked with other clips on top of them being in 4K as well. It took surprisingly only around 26 minutes to render that 14 minute video with everything that I just mentioned. That is very, very good. My computer can't accomplish that. And I'm running an 8700K with the same graphics card. So imagine that. This Ryzen 7 3800X performs like an absolute monster and it is totally amazing for the kinds of things that will be done with it. Not to mention that it's got a ton of room for future proofing. There are enough slots in there to add at least one more graphics card to add more RAM if you wanted to upgrade to 64 gigs. There's also room for even adding extra storage. There's still a lot of future proofing to be done there. Not to mention that this computer is still going to look really awesome a couple of years from now, which is always very exciting to anyone. It's always a nice accomplishment when someone builds a PC, no matter how long you've been building it for. And if you are interested in this build, same way that I mentioned earlier, all the parts for this build, the links for them to Amazon are going to be left in the description. Now, it is good to note that these links are going to be affiliated, just as I mentioned earlier, which means that when you click on our links and you use any of those links to make a purchase, then we do get a small commission that does help us run things a little more smoothly around here. So if you were to use those, we would definitely very much appreciate it. So do make sure to check those out. Also, we just launched a Patreon recently, which means that for as little as around $5 a month, you would be able to join our private Discord if you decided to come to us through Patreon. So with that said, do make sure to check that out if that is something that interests you, but we have other tiers to take a look at. So we'll make sure to leave that linked in the description. And I'd like to thank all of you for joining us in this build. This was a ton of fun to work on and I definitely hope to be able to work on more videos like this in the future. This has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you all later. Enjoy.